My name is Wilsey Wong. I work for DFS Venture Singapore. I am the managing director for Singapore and Indonesia. So I'm um, very happy to have the opportunity to chair this session, a uh, conceptual framework for luxury, uh, conspicuous uh, cons uh, consumption. Um, when I, you know, when SMU came out and, and invited me and I, and I have some snapshots of some of the speakers' papers, I find this is a very, very interesting topic, you know, other than all the uniqueness, everything that we thought about it, and actually they give another perspective of seeing things. And I'm not going to steal the thunder from the speaker. We have four speakers today, um, and each speaker will have 20 minutes to their presentation, and uh, our friends as in, uh, from SMU there will, will give us some indicative time that you know guys you have to wrap up and, <laughs> and um and we shall please uh, hold off all the q a's possible towards the end of the presentation so that we can have more time to make sure that you know we have we give our presenters uh, ample time so uh with that i'm going to introduce the first speaker christine kim yes. all right uh, exciting to be here. Um, I thought about how to start my talk a lot and I have this other theoretical like you know complicated story that I usually do at a academic conference but given this is more like we have some practitioners as well as some students and you know it's industry relevant thing so I wanted to just present it as how it really started. <laughs> and so <laughs> the question was really just started from one day it was just one of those lunch uh, conversations. So we were just chatting, and this is like five years back now, so the project has been like going on for some time, hopefully out this year, but um, so we're having this lunch conversation, and the topic was about political ideology. We're going through a lot of political change in the world in the US, right? So the topic was, the question was, do you think the Republicans, so one of the collaborators in David works a lot on luxury goods, power and status. The conversation, the question that we asked was super simple, which was, do you think the Republicans will spend more money on luxury goods than Democrats, right? Well, like, oh wow, why does it sound so intuitive like maybe they would, right? <laughs> and then we're like, but there is nothing so theoretical, so we just sort of wanted to dismiss this whole thing. But the more we ponder upon these questions, actually there are reasons to think about this. And these two variables, as one is political ideology, the other one being the story consumption, maybe there is a reason why we should start considering maybe there is a relationship between the two. So essentially, luxury goods, <clears throat> uh, you would, it's, it's very intuitive that luxury goods will share very close relationship with how you view wealth. So how wealth is accumulated, how it's spent, how it's distributed, right? And this belief system that shapes your view on wealth you would think that, yes, that's how it will, it will influence whether you decide to spend money on luxury goods, whether you desire it, whether you feel right, appropriate to spend that money to, to buy something expensive. So we started from that, and the literature actually says that one of the belief systems that shapes your view on wealth is political ideology. So the question started from how does political ideology influence your desire for luxury goods and how you actually spend money on luxury goods. So here, let me do a little bit of clarification on what I mean by political ideology, because it comes in so many things. But here, we're going to focus on just one dimension that past research has identified as the most powerful dimension that captures variances in political ideology, which is a spectrum that varies from left to right. So this varying degree of political conservatism. So on the right are people in the US, what we call them Republicans, or right-winged conservatives. On the left are the people who are liberal, who are um, Democrats in the US refer to them. So I'm going to use these terms interchangeably. When calling them categorically, it could be Republicans, conservatives, or also continuously speaking, it's either high on political conservatism, which would be low on political liberalism, or, or the other way around. So now, the literature says that they actually influence your view on wealth. So how your wealth should be accumulated, how it should be spent, how it should be distributed, there's a varying degree of um, differences in how they think of wealth. So people on the right side, the Republicans, generally think that wealth is a signal of your merit and your hard work. Therefore, if you want to spend it and signal it, that's fine. So social inequality, which is there are some rich people, there are some poor people, rich people want to say that they're rich, is fine. They're more endorsing and they're more accepting of social inequality and social hierarchy. 
Now the people on the left are different from that. They believe that the social hierarchy or inequality are a reflection of failed social system, and they want to correct it as much as possible. So this different view in wealth and how it should be spent, how it should be um, distributed, leads to consequential effects on various social and public policies leading to all of these things. Now, in relation to luxury consumption, this sort of hints that maybe, potentially, possibly, it sort of says that Republicans or the conservatives in general have a little more passive view on wealth, accumulation of wealth, and, and, and signaling that, right? So maybe one plausible hypothesis that's intuitive might be that Republicans would spend more money on luxury goods, they would desire it more, they would find it more acceptable to do that, which means political conservatism increases your desire for luxury goods or increases luxury consumption thereafter. That's one plausible hypothesis, which is completely in line with the intuition over the lunch chat, which was in, uh, a waste of our time. So we want to see, is this just our intuition, but, or is this something that's shared by general people, general population? So we conducted a very simple pilot study and asked two questions. Uh, between Republicans and Democrats, who do you think will love status goods more? Who do you think will spend more money on luxury goods? And completely in line with this intuition, um, about 75% of people thought that Republicans would spend more money and would buy luxury goods more. But this is the perception. And this is well reflected. You can look up newspapers, articles. Republican Party always portrayed a party for the 1%, for the rich people, and all these perceptions sort of in line. But this is how I think Republican and Democrats would behave. But is this really true of how they behave? <coughs> would my political ideology, believing that I'm more on the right side versus the left side, would that actually lead to, above and beyond all these other things that's influencing your decision to buy luxury goods, would this actually increase your luxury goods if you're holding more political like conservative ideology? Now, in order to answer that question, uh, we're going to propose uh, two, we're going to distinguish between two different types of status goals. So in past research, social status defined as respect and admiration received in the eyes of other people are one main drivers of why people buy luxury goods. You buy the luxury goods to show that you have this respect and admiration. <coughs> Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually distinguish the social status can come from, it can stem from either the desire of wanting to maintain and keep your current status as it is, so it's a reflection of who you are, or as a tool to improve and advance your status, which we're going to call either status maintenance goal or status advancement goal. So the luxury consumption, the decision to buy it in relation to social status, we can think of it as either because it's a reflection of my wealth, it's a reflection of where I am, or your current status is matching with your desire status. So I want to show this current uh, respect and admiration that I'm receiving from others, I want to achieve that. It comes from that desire, which is what we call status maintenance. Or it could be a tool to improve your status, which is when your desire status is more than what you currently have. So by carrying this handbag, or by having this luxury goods, other people would think that your social status is higher and get more attribution for that. So we'll distinguish between the status maintenance goal and status advancement goal, and we'll show that depending on which goal people are pursuing, so which goal is activated, either because situationally or um, the goal person, which we're not going to get into in details, but at the given moment, why a consumer might pursue a goal may be internally driven or situationally driven. So we'll, we'll show um, either situationally or by experimentally manipulating it. Depending on which goal is activated, uh, we'll see that political conservatism increases luxury consumption in one condition, but not in another condition. So why is that? Past research shows that there's a lot of evidence showing that Essentially, political conservatism, what it does is it increases your preference for stability, both in personal domain as well as in social domain. So it's not only the way that you want to keep the social hierarchy as it is, but people who share political conservative ideology want to um, keep having the same personal routine daily. Uh, they choose a familiar music over unfamiliar music, also the brand choice, so it spills over in different things. So this past research suggests that status maintenance goal, Republicans will consider satisfying status maintenance goal more important than the Democrats. So 
But now, since advanced mango, the desire of wanting to, to improve it, we weren't sure initially how this will fly. Um, my thought that maybe the Democrats will like it more, but the more we read into and thought about it, the evidence actually suggests that the desire of wanting to improve your status or advance it is more pervasive and universal. So we hypothesized that maybe there would not be a difference between the two. So it leads to our former hypothesis, which is when status maintenance goal is activated, so when there's that desire of wanting to keep the things as they are, social status-wise, this is when Republicans will show greater desire for luxury goods, and they will buy more luxury goods than Democrats, but not otherwise in any other case. So when there is no, so in no more cases in the baseline, we'll not observe a difference between the two. Even when there is a status goal activated, meaning that they have a desire for status, but if it's for the different focus, which is to advance their status, will not see a difference either. So this is very specific to their desire wanting to keep the things as they are. So uh, we wrongly, so sort of like getting at the intuition, we think that Republicans love it because they're obsessed with social status, but it actually comes from their desire of wanting to keep their status as it is and want to defend it as it is. So that's essentially what we're going to test. Uh, this is a conceptual framework that we'll be testing across the six studies, but I am ambitious with four studies, but let me see how many studies I can get through. Uh, in the first two studies, I will show that in two conditions of status maintenance versus status advancement, where both the conditions, people have the goal to pursue status, uh, only when it's related to maintaining, uh, we'll see the difference between the Republicans and Democrats. In the third study, I'll try to show a relationship uh, why this is happening in relation to the underlying process, which is their heightened preference for keeping to, uh, wanting to keep things as they are, preference for stability. And the last study, which I hope to get, is an analysis of an actual car purchase data set. So we'll look at the car, whether Republicans or Democrats buy more luxury cars, uh, their car decisions, so the real second data analysis that we've done. So, so in the first study, <coughs> This is an experiment. All the first three studies are experiments. So in the first study, we first, this was done on MTurk uh, with American population. So we first asked them to indicate their political ideology. After that, people were assigned to two conditions, either in a maintenance condition or advancement conditions. And uh, we told them a whole scenario about how their social status may change or may not change. In a maintenance condition, we told them to think about uh, how to maintain and keep their advancement condition, how to make it better, improve it. Afterwards, we uh, led them to another survey, which was portrayed as a, as a brand evaluation separate survey. And here they evaluated uh, 12 different fashion and car <coughs> brands. And some of them were pretested to be luxury goods. So in the eyes of this target that we're do, um, dealing with, some of these brands were luxury goods and some of them were considered not luxury. And we looked at how much they want to buy an item from these brands. And that served as our, our dependent variable. So the difference between how much you desire luxury brand uh, versus the regular brands, the difference is our DV. And what we predicted was that political conservatism, which was measured continuously, so those who are high, which are Republicans or conservative people, will show greater desire for luxury goods only in the status maintenance condition, but not in the status of investment condition. So that's how we predicted, and that's what we found. As expected, we found a significant interaction between, oh, we turned it up. We found a significant interaction between the two variables that we expected to in, um, interact, the political ideology and the status quo. And now, more importantly, if you see this, on the right side, the high political conservatism are the people who are conservative. So you can think of as Republicans. You can see that they desire luxury goods more than uh, in the in the status of status maintaining condition than the advancing condition, so there is a difference among the conservatives, but between uh, but there is no difference. Oh, sorry about that. On the on the left side, so among those who are not high on political conservatism, there was no difference in these two conditions. So this was the first study, and in the second study, what we do is we actually change the frame of what they answer. So the whole logic was very similar. We first measured the political ideology. And we assigned it to two conditions. We used a little <coughs> bit different manipulations here uh, compared to the first one uh, to address their differences in regulatory focus and things like that. So to induce something that's non-loss, which we're not getting into details, but a different manipulation to, to activate these goals. After that, we uh, manipulated in order to see if this is 
uh, to cleanly manipulate the perception of luxury, we introduced the same item, which was headphone, and we portrayed it, framed it either as luxury goods or not luxury goods. So this is the same item. So it's not different brands that they're evaluating, but the same item that we're presenting that we framed either as luxury versus not. And so this was a two by two conditions. They were either thinking about maintaining status or advancing their status, and they um, indicate their willingness to pay for a headphone that they that we presented as a luxury good or not. What we predicted was that political conservatism will increase willingness to pay for the headphone that's framed as luxury, but not for the headphone that's not framed as luxury. So it's not just a simple matching effect. This is very driven by specific to the luxury goods. And we'll only see it in the status maintaining conditions. So similar to what we got in the first one, this is the result. It's a little more complicated to interpret. But on the bottom, the two lines, here is a political conservatism. So people on the right side are the Republicans or the conservative people. On the left side are the liberal people. Uh, on the bottom, uh, the idea is that when it wasn't framed as luxury goods, there was no difference in anywhere. But when the product was presented as a luxury good, this is when we see the same difference that we found in the first study, where among the conservatives in the status, event, in status maintenance condition, they were willing to pay more for the product. So the whole idea is when you're thinking about keeping your social status, you want to continue to have this respect and admiration from other people. Those who are conservatives are willing to pay more for the same headphone, same product that they have. Uh, but we don't see that difference when their focus is still on status, but they're thinking about how to make their status better, how to receive more respect and admiration from other people. So these are two studies testing that. And in the next study, uh, we make it a little more complicated and introduce a baseline. So, and we manipulate uh, status quo uh, in a more managerial relevant way. So instead of manipulating a different task, we uh, vary the advertising slogan. So, and this is very related to a lot of sort of the slogans that uh, luxury goods are using. They use social status appeals to attract people to buy their products. And the appeal can be either appealing to keeping your status as it is or, or advancing it. So we manipulate our status goals that way. So after indicating their political ideals, they were assigned to actually three conditions. Um, and all of this was presented as a product evaluation. So they saw this print advertisement of a sunglasses, eyewear. And this eyewear was either uh, presented as a luxury goods, and it's helping, uh, and their slogan was to keep your status, or it was to update your status, improve your status, or didn't have any of that. So this was a, the basic condition. Um, and afterwards, they indicate their willingness to pay for the eyewear. And we uh, also measured what we thought would be the underlying process, which is the preference for stability. So we measured their preference for how much they prefer to keep things as they are. We thought this is why the reason why we, we see these differences. So what we predicted was that in both the status condition, which is maintenance and advancement, uh, they will be willing to pay more. So it's not the status of investment is not effective, but it just doesn't interact with political conservatism. And we expected that interaction where the difference between Republicans and Democrats will only be shown again in the status maintenance condition. So this is what we found in it, political conservatism. Um, the gray line is the no status conditions. So even status advancement, you can see that uh, they're willing to pay more than when there's no status um, focus, which is consistent with all the social status literature. When there's status status, people would want to desire luxury goods more. But that difference between the republic among the Republicans are pronounced um, among, uh, uh, among the Republicans, the difference between the two status goals. So this is just replicating three times and showing that when they have this desire of wanting to keep things as they are, that's when we see that Republicans actually desire luxury goods more than Democrats. Now, the last study, um, and we did the mediation test to show that preference for social stability underlies this. Um, the last study, we tested it whether we can actually examine this in real life. So what we did was we got this purchase data set, car purchase data set, which is a really large data set. This is a survey on US automobile purchase from 2010 to 2012. Um, it's like something close to 40,000 people answered this. So after they purchased their cars, new car buyers, we asked them 
it wasn't us, we got the data from the consulting company, but uh, there were a bunch of questions that they had to answer. So what car they purchased and their background information. One of the information they had to disclose was their political ideology. So they identified themselves either as Republicans or Democrats. So that was one variable we had. And the DB that we used was what type of car they purchased. We can actually observe whether they purchased luxury cars or non-luxury cars. So we coded the car they purchased as luxury cars, which would include all these cars like Lamborghini, Lexus, Beamer, and so forth, or non-luxury cars. And we uh, can't manipulate status quo here, but we proxied it meaning that we found a variable that will assess when status maintenance goal is high. Test research shows that when your current status is favorable, that is when you're more likely to focus on maintaining versus not. So what we looked at was your current status being high, you're more likely to focus on maintaining your status, but when your current status is not high, you're low income SES person, then it's not likely that you'll focus on keeping things as they are. So we proxy their current status as the degree of how status maintenance goal is activated. So high current status means high activation of status maintenance goal compared to your low current status. So we proxy the status goal by doing that. And we included all these other control variables that you can think of in the data set. What we predicted basically was that Republicans will purchase more luxury cars than Democrats when the status maintenance goal is more strongly activated, that is when their current status is actually high. So we'll not see this difference at the mean, we'll not see this difference even amongst the low SES, but when your current status is high, then we'll see this difference. And in fact, that's what we found. So there was a significant interaction as well as a similar pattern that we see. When your current social status is high, this is when we see that Republicans actually purchase more luxury cars than Democrats but you don't see this difference when their current status is low or at the mean. So this is the main finding. And basically, we show that political conservatism, we identify when political conservatism increases your desire for luxury goods, as well as actual luxury consumption. And what we identify is that it's not that Republicans love luxury goods more. It's not that they just obsess with size in general. But it's really their desire of wanting to keep their current status, wanting to um, maintain the respect and admiration that we see from others that's driving them to spend more money on luxury goods than Democrats. Uh, we're one of the first to actually investigate any relationship between political ideology and luxury consumption. Um, and, and we believe that, managerially speaking, this is uh, really important for luxury marketers who are focusing on luxury goods by definition is not mass product. We need to target and segment the market and, and carefully identify for whom we can appeal to. Uh, we believe we identify two factors, which could be political ideology, easily observable and measurable in the macro data, as well as the proxy of your status maintenance goal, which can be either manipulated in your print advertising or it can be proxied by their current situation. You can use these two to figure out when you should when you should target and where you should target. So we came up with this sort of comprehensive guidelines on what managers should do and how you can use these variables to segment and target the market. I think my time is up, but that's it. Thank you.